And welcome to In Retrospection, the show where we review the retro today. I am your host, Joshua Caleb, and joining me once again is Zach of All Trades, Zach Williamson. Woo! And yes, he actually does look like that. It's true, I do. It's, it's, it's uncanny how accurate that is. And also, despite my restrained bandwidth, we also have another guest, Joel Brodsky. I forgot to ask how you wanted to be introduced, so. But he, he also looks good. like that, too. <laughs> that is actually accurate. It's true, I've seen him. He does look exactly like that. Matter of fact, I think the android droid was modeled after him. <laughs> All right, so today, before we actually start, I did have a listener correction from one of our viewers. Curtis B. posted a comment on the blog that wanted to note that Pong, which we talked about last time, that Pong was actually a clone of the game Ping Pong on the Magnavox Odyssey. So we were talking about all the Pong clones, and Pong was like the most cloned game in history. But as it turns out, it was actually a p clone itself. <clears throat> but to 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 be fair, I I did some research on it, and the ping pong game wasn't nearly ad as advanced as Pong. The Pong was created as a training exercise, and he based it off the game ping pong, but he added a lot more depth to it, like the. I don't know what you'd call it, the more advanced physics on the paddles where the ball would change direct trajectory depending on where it, it, it hit on the paddle. And he added, like, it would, it would speed up after time from going back and forth. But, yeah, there was actually a little legal battle over that. So, then on to our first game which I know Joel is a huge fan of this, be Toe Jam and Earl. Let's see if I can get the video playing. Yeah, th this is probably one of the oddest games I have, like, ever played in my entire life. Which would be why I like it. <laughs> yeah, I think T Toe Jam and Earl was, like, was, like, the crazy... If you took Final Fantasy and then you just did, like, an 80s remix of it, I think that was Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah, it it, was, it to me it struck me as sort of one of those games that a bunch of guys in their free time were just gathered in their office drinking beer or whatever and just started coming up with a game idea and just started anything that came into their mind they just started throwing into the game. I'm pretty sure they were stoned or drunk, <laughs> one of the two. Cause it's, it's supposed to be you know about those these two aliens that are flying through space in their spaceship that looks more like a boombox and a surfboard and they crash land on Earth, which this is apparently a very weird post-apocalyptic Earth because it is mostly water and the rest of the land is all floating in these vertical stacks in the sky that you, that you um, travel between using elevators. And you also have to avoid all these various enemies. And pretty much if you can imagine it, it's probably an enemy in here. So you got those mailbox monsters, you got those little demon guys, 
little invisible the doctor the, the crazy and laughing doctor mothers pushing their kids around in strollers um little cherub guys giant hamster and to everything is in here it's been about 20 Earl years since by... i pl go ahead I was going to say Toe Jam and Earl developed by Bill S. Preston Esquire and Ted Theodore Logan. <laughs> Whoever they are. Yeah, but it's actually, it's actually kind of a somewhat deep and interesting game because it actually does have the two-player co-op. You can have two people playing either split-screen or single, depending on where you are. And there's a sort of weird level up system. I don't I haven't figured out how it works, but you level up your rank. And there's also like various presents you collect and that's basically your items that you use. But mo most of the presents are all hidden so you have no idea what they do. So you might end up using an item and having a storm cloud follow you around and zapping you with lightning for the next three minutes. As I recall, I, I think the object was to find the parts of the ship so that way you can leave, isn't it? Yep, yeah, find like ten parts of the ship which are like randomly scattered on the area. But they, they were nice enough to, um, when you, when you enter a little level, it tells you if there's a ship piece there or not, and then you just have to find it. But this being a um, Sega game, it's actually been re-released several times, and you can actually get it today, either on the Wii Virtual Console for like 8 bucks, or you can even get it on Steam, at least on the PC, I'm not sure on Mac, but there it's only like 3 bucks. And they're also going to be re-releasing a whole bunch of Sega Genesis games on a collection. Or I don't know how much that's going to have this in it, too. The great thing about the original game was it had an internal soundboard. So you could basically play all the sound effects without playing the game. It was. Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me because I also have a clip here of the soundboard. Turn that up a I know bit. after a long night of partying with a, a group of my friends, at about 6.30 in the morning, two of us played with that for about a half an hour to an hour, just playing the sound effects over and over and over again, and cracking up the entire time. Well, yeah, because you can have two players, just like the main game, you have two people doing this simultaneously, and all of the face buttons and control buttons all become different sound effects that you can play. And when you're in the actual sound effect mode, the, the D-pad like cycles through various like random soundboards or something, so you have like no idea what you're going to be getting when you're jamming to the various game tunes. It's definitely a pretty deep game for an early Genesis title. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed playing this for hours on end with my friends. Yep. And here is the crazy sound mode. <laughs> this was the most absolutely ridiculous game ever. It was great. Yeah, actually, I think gained quite a cult following because there were actually two sequels to it. How can you not love this game? It, I mean, it's just pure fun. You know, and that tune, oh, absolutely. And that tune just gets stuck in your head. <laughs> Play the laugh. I, I think it's in here somewhere. <laughs> 
I used to do a really good imitation of it. I didn't stop the recording until I got that sound out of it. That was always my favorite. Yeah. So, the next game would, is the sequel to this, to Toe Jam and Earl Panic on Funkatron. If we want to go through the whole story or not. <clears throat> this game was really cool, though, in the fact that it actually had, you know, there was a story. You know, the first one, it's like, oh, you crash land, you find your stuff, and you get out. It was more about playing with the other features, like the soundboard, than anything else. Mm hmm. But this one, there was actually stuff to it. It was. It was weird, man. A video game with a storyline like this? No well, way. Well, most games, their story was entirely self-contained within the little game manual that you may or may not have gotten, depending on where you bought it. Right, exactly. So you you know, you know, were lucky because you would read the thing and you would get backstory. And it's like, oh, that's the whole point of this game. Yeah, and if you happen to buy it like a pawn shop or something that didn't have the manual... You're just playing this game with the little, the little green elfie guy with the sword running around this, this these woods and forests, and you have no idea what you're doing or what you're supposed to be doing, but, you know, it's a game. You play it. As of this one, that actually is even crazier looking than the first one, because this actually takes place on their home planet of Funkatron. That's the best name for a planet ever. Well, it's the planet of funk. <laughs> so I, apparently, the um, while they were on Earth rebuilding their ship, a bunch of Earthlings stowed away on their ship when they came back home. And as we are wont to do, we start running around causing havoc and annoying the living daylights out of all the residents. So... Toe Jam and Earl have to go around and jar us all in these little bottles and ship us back to Earth in, the, in another little rocket ship. <laughs> I still can't believe they incorporated a storyline into this. <laughs> well, it, it involves aliens and humans. I mean, well, what else do you need? Oh, that's true, I guess. And that actually has the has a two-player mode like the first one, too, so you can still play with your friend or whatever. And it, even I saw on the menu, there is a kid mode or something, which I'm guessing must make it really easy. I know, some, some of those Earthlings can be a royal pain to try and um, capture. Are you kidding me? I've been trying to capture Earthlings for years. <laughs> well, yeah, it's really bad when they keep taking pictures of you or when you have to deal with these um, old ladies and their poodles that are running around and biting at you. I still don't let people take pictures of me to this day for some of those very same reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, I vaguely remember this game. The first one is the my real love. Yeah, I'm not sure which one actually was more popular. Because the, the third one that came out after this was kind of a mixed success failure thing. The 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 the, 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 the three equal is it's kind of like Jurassic Park three, you know. I I'm one of the people that firmly believe that Jurassic Park three never actually happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm sure some people would agree with you on that. But I think I have a clip of the third one. I never even knew they did a third one. Uh, it was a, planned for the Dreamcast, but they did it on the Xbox. Okay, yeah, See, I don't like this. <laughs> See, this is a this is a, an, a perfect example of when classic games should never go modern. Most definitely. Yeah, but they they added a little feminine alien character in there, so it had to be good, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, it, it's it still know, has kind some of, of to the me, same... it's the Sonic Adventure of, of no Toe Jam and Earl is what it is. Download some games and play them. Yeah, it, it, it has yeah. some of the same charms and funkiness of the other one, but it definitely lost something in the translation. Well, I think it doesn't have any of the charm of the original whatsoever. I mean, just because it's got better graphics does not make it a better game. Right, graphics do not make a... a, a yes, absolutely. You can make an absolutely gorgeous game with the best graphics on the planet. But if it's going to be something that's in a series like this, you have to stay true to the original. You you have to you can't destroy it with some bullcrap story. Oh yeah, absolutely. the story on this thing is absolutely horrendous. Hey, the, the great um, Funkopotamus or whoever their leader of the Funkatron planet, all his sacred albums of funk or whatever have been stolen and taken to Earth. So you have to go back and get them while also trying to convert all of the humans on Earth to the ways of funk. Yeah, see, too long, didn't read. It's, that's, I just don't care. Yeah. I also don't like the fact that they've changed the soundtrack. I mean, that was part of the charm of the original. Yeah, yeah, see, it, it's it's one of those where they think they have to adjust it for the time, but honestly, you can't do that. You have to be true to the original. You have to maintain that same sound, that same funk that the original had, because now it doesn't. It's it's it, it's just bleh. now it's a rap video. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with a, with like a it, it's complete, a bad rap video. I mean, rap videos are bad to begin here. with. What year did this one come out? Oh, shoot, I don't remember. I know when you, when you watch it, the story intro is like painful to watch. And Toe Jam is like a complete and total jerk. Toe Jam and Earl 3 Mission to Earth was released um, in October of 2002 for the Xbox. That explains a lot. Yeah. Okay, so then let's move off of this funky disaster to a true retro classic. Uh, one of my favorite franchises of all time. The Blue Bomber himself, Mega Man. To me, Mega Man was Mega Man was the ultimate robot hero. You know, he he was a simple robot kid created by a doctor who wanted to do right by the world, and of course there had to be an arch nemesis 
that had to have things his way, and it's just the, the I don't I just being a computer geek, being the the tech geek that I am, Mega Man just appeals to me. It pulls it tugs at my heartstrings just because it's so amazingly futuristically badass. Yeah, I know. I know I never played the original Mega Man when it was out much. I did I had um, Mega Man X, but I did actually buy the collection of this when it, when they came out with that Mega Man anniversary. And the, the only the only problem I had with it was that it was like insanely hard. I, I wasn't I was horrible at it, especially the first one. And that's I couldn't even yeah. Get that's past one a of the, the, the things about the Mega Man series. It, they were all un godly hard yeah the, the this was before the casual gamers <laughs> the, the, this was not the game for the fainted heart especially the first no, the first one all. even have a save feature oh yeah yeah if you died if you died you know you get through five of the six bosses and you died you're done that's it yeah i don't think it was until later that they act when they wasn't even a save it was just a password that you would get like, right. The they added the password feature, I think, in three. Was it all? Was it all the way until three? I think so. Let me uh, let me confirm. Yeah, because yeah, you're constantly barraged with enemies from all sides, and the enemies respawn instantly. And even some of the just the platforming puzzles. I think yeah, the, this one, uh, Guts Man. I don't even think I've made it 100 feet on this level. The first one was absolutely horrifically difficult. Okay, no, I'm sorry. The password system did come in too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. a simple moving platform, and except that you have these gaps where the platform just falls out from under you. This was such a oh. Well, one of those games that you love to hate. Kind of, it's, it's it, it is. Awesome you do love to hate love it, it, and you, you can't help but fall in love with the game and the story and the action. But at the same time, it is a pain to try to finish this game. Yeah, you, it's one of those things you just want to throw the controller into the TV and go outside. Ugh. Don't say that. <laughs> oh yeah, that may be a little too much, but. That's a little harsh. <laughs> yeah. This this one you can only wait right now. You can only get it, I think, on the Wii Virtual Console for like five bucks. Oh, I, and I did forget to mention that Toad Jam and Earl Panic and Funkatron. That's available in the same place, the same price as the original Toad Jam. But this one is all is exclusively Nintendo. Oh, sorry, I get into it, man. <laughs> Mega Man had some awesome music. Yeah. Being a comic book geek, I remember the ads for this game. Full page ads in almost every comic. And and they were all like amazingly well done, weren't they? Well yeah, because the the picture oh, yeah. like, I remember like some of the um album art, whatever you the game art for the game that they made looked nothing like the actual game. Mega Man looked like some old 20, 30 year old guy with this little skinny arm cannon thing and it, it, was, it looked like a comic book. Those um, realistic, gritty kind of comics. It didn't look anything like the actual gameplay. That, that was back when they actually drew art for games rather than just using um the pictures. rendering engine yeah yeah well I, no some some of the old Atari games in in television they actually did use game for game renders for the for the art some of them did but I mean you look at a lot of these classic games and the cover art on the case I mean it was it was all hand drawn it was all very it, it makes was, the game look it awesome. It was very exaggerated the way it was done, but it was so beautiful. Yeah, it, it makes you want to play the game, but then you actually play the game, and it looks nothing like that. Just... 
Oh, and I wanted to quick show. They actually made a recent remake of this game for the PSP. Mega Man Powered Up. Which is very odd because the, the original Mega Man games themselves, you know, he looked kind of like a little, a little robot kid kind of thing. And this one, they really accentuated that and th this almost looks like a little Tykes kind of game. Oh my god, it's, it's, it's an anime the... feel to it. Yeah, the, the, they it's... really brought out the anime in this one. It's very, it's very Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. No, I, well, yeah, you have to listen to the dialogue. It's worse than that. Zelda, the dialogue, Wind Waker, the dialogue was at least good. This, the dialogue and voice acting is um, horrible. And then they all look it like totally they looks like they took a. Uh... It looks like they took Fisher Price, those uh, oversized figures, yeah. and turned it into a video game. Yeah, basically, on Mega Holy Man, crap, Fisher you're Price. Right. Yeah, that that was uh, that was really weird. I don't know. I don't know why on earth they did that. That looks like Kool Aid Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flaming Kool Aid. Come crashing through the wall. Okay, well, next one is, th this is actually the Mega Man game that I played more, that I think is probably my favorite, or one of my favorites of the franchise. This this changed the way Mega Man was done, it, it changed the whole dynamic because it it really focused not only on the gameplay, but on the story as well, and man, this was such a great game. Yeah. And the, and it being for the Super Nintendo, the, the Mega Man X, the graphic bump definitely helped a lot. And not only that, but I mean, look at this. It got, it's got like a, a computer boot sequence for a title screen. This is the this is one of my favorite title sequences ever. Yeah, and apparently in the two, year two thousand X, the the RAM is like a couple terabytes. The, no, that was something like uh, I thought. I think it was like eight. Petabytes or something was it? It just showed. Yeah, I mean, RAM. let's let's face it though. You know, <laughs> we have Watson now. Watson's up to 128 terabytes, so it's not far off. So either one of two things is going to happen: either Doctor Wily's going to take over, and we're going to have Terminators, or we'll have Mega Man by the end of the century. Yeah, that, this is actually the, I think one part on this that confused me for a little while is I thought um. This was Mega Man grown up, but the, the Mega Man X is actually a different Mega Man. I think it was created after. It's a little confusing the story because he said that he was talking about he created these robots that actually have feelings and can think and whatever, which they, didn't they have that in the original Mega Man series? Because you know Mega Man was a robot that decided that he had to go and stop Dr. Wily. Well, yeah, but at that point it was it was less of um, being emotionally compelled and it was more being it was more of a duty, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, but I think for the Mega Man X I suppose was a model created sometime after Mega Man and was then like he Dr. Lights thought that the robot was too advanced for the current technology and current culture, so he like sealed them up in a container for centuries until the world was ready, kind of thing. Uh, if only we could do that with people now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we just wouldn't have to release them, that's all. Yeah. It's kind of what I'm talking about. <laughs> bronze them. We'll put them in the bronze chamber at Warehouse 13. We'll put them in the box like on Space Goes Coast to Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Zorak, you want to go Rex. in the box? The box. <laughs> now, th this one, my, my impression from what I've played, which I, I've actually played this one quite a bit, the Mega Man X actually wasn't as hard as the original Mega Man series on Nintendo. 
No, it wasn't. It wasn't. There were a lot of new things that they introduced in X um, that really made the gameplay a lot. It was a lot easier, but they made up for it in storyline. You know, you yeah. of course you expect it to be hard, but they really did a such a great job with the story in this game. Yeah, and then this is one. This is the one that's actually. I think probably created oh, the whole franchise franchise that's continued now, because most of the games, the Mega Man games that have come out after this, have all in some relation been a sequel, prequel, whatever to the X series, the original Mega Man, and what is never really mentioned or talked of much. It's always the X series. And and X was you know. X is one of the few occasions where you know it's a reboot of the series, but it w it actually did help, you know. Yeah. They, I mean, this isn't like they, a, they an took away the jump in the style shark. of the original. The original, you know, the eight bit graphics, it did have that sort of cutesy little kid kind of feel to it. For this, that definitely was a much darker, um, kind of grittier story. This kind of adds to the series, though, where Toe Jam and Earl 3 looks... <laughs> yeah, this kind of looked like it, it detracted from it. Yeah, th this definitely yeah. adds a lot. Especially in, like, gameplay, too. Like, the wall kick. That that gameplay in this is, like, invaluable. I, I wish they would have had that in the original series. So, the countless times you, like accidentally fall down a pit but there's the wall is right there and if you could just sort of slide on that wall and kick your way back up you would have saved yourself where was the thing where we could jump off of walls in the first one for the first like eight yeah <laughs> there's the, the wall kick and then they added the ability to dash which is Kind of similar to I think, the original Mega Man. He eventually got the slide. Yeah, he got the slide, but well, some of those the slide was a power up that he had to that use energy. One of the bosses, one of those power ups he got from a boss with the ability to slide. Right. Does the dash with this inherent ability? Yeah, this one act. This one actually isn't available. Currently, which actually surprised me, it wasn't even available on the virtual console. And the only way you can kind of get it now is they act, they made a version of it for the PSP, where again they updated the graphics and stuff. Yeah, but that it still wasn't the same. I mean, it's not as bad as the last one, but. Yeah, the, this one they um, added a lot, added a lot more of the anime styling. X, there's a high probability that the insurgency there was caused by Mavericks. So th this one actually, I don't think the graphics this really helped Sigma's much. They, they look kind of cool, but I think they actually made them look chunkier and kind of dorkier. Yeah, see, it's just, I, I don't know. Like, the graphics are great and all, but, it again, <coughs> graphics awesome a good game do not make. Yeah, it, it looks too much like the Fisher-Price Mega Man powered up thing. It does. Yeah, everything's too sort of round and chunky and cutesy looking. Like someone put them in a plastic mold and put LED lights on them. Yeah. All right. Well, I am actually have an ad to run. This is our first sort of real episode. I actually have an ad video. I think we we'll cut to that. I hate to break this to you, but your shirts are boring. Make a statement with your shirt. Get a verbosity. 
For Bossy Tees are shirts that speak for themselves. We have quips, quotes, and other babble without all the graffiti. Plus, you can support your favorite indie with our advertisement shirts. Head on over to verbosities.com. Hey, was that a G-Man Show shirt I just saw? Yes, it was. I Let's see, they have shirts for the G-Man Show. They also have shirts for This Old Nerd, do they not? Yep, I actually started that and made a couple of shirts, some quips and quotes and stuff, and a shirt for This Old Nerd, G-Man... I have a sh- shirt for my book. I'm going to be oh, making I'll a shirt. Oh, I'll definitely have to get the one for your book. Yeah, I'm going to be making a shirt for this podcast too. Putting that on there. Nobody likes that I ass guy though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be nice to I ass. He can't help it that he got a real job. <laughs> He's my nemesis. <laughs> is he? He is. All right, we have two more Mega Man games to cover before we move on to the, I believe, the last game. Mega Man? Mega Man? Mega Man? Can you hear me? Just barely. The transmission is too clear. I got worried because the transmission got cut off suddenly. I'm okay. This is the last door. Have either of you played the Mega Man Legends or Mega Man 64 for the no. PSX or I... Nintendo 64? No. Uh, yeah, th- this one is actually where it might be the first one where they really brought out the anime in Mega Man. Aside from, I'm, I don't remember when the TV series came out. But the uh, everyone has spiky hair, everyone has high-pitched voices and sounds like a girl and all yeah, that stuff like that. Peter in the chat room just says Dragon Ball Z much, which it really does have that style. It's sad. Yeah. It's anime once again, which has to be in everything nowadays. Yeah, exactly. And it's just. Uh... Yeah, the, the story, it, it actually takes place, what is it, like thousands or millions of years after the X series. So, like, the, the entire world has become flooded. And now there's only little patches of land, and yeah, people have to find all this ancient technology and whatnot. But of course, there's like Zelda, there always has to be a Mega Man. And in this one, there is actually a role as well. But aside from the story being um, very anime and kind of dumb, and the gameplay is actually not bad. It's, it's, yeah, it, it's 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 not terrible, but I I just I don't know. Mega Man has always been a two D platformer type. You know, this is this is way too first person for my taste as far as a Mega Man series is concerned. Yeah, they, it definitely was. I think they styled it much more after Mario and Zelda, probably more Zelda because there isn't much of platforming, right mostly um, run and gun. But there's, uh, they added RPG elements where you can find various parts and build upgrades for yourself. And there's towns and shops you can visit. Yeah, see, this is it's the it's the Mega Man RPG is what this is, and it's just eh. yeah. I'd picture myself playing this with the sound off. <laughs> I can't oh, imagine absolutely this hours on end. Yeah, well, once the one people when people start talking, or especially when you get the main characters in doing voices, that that's when it really goes downhill. You know, I'll Joel, I'll see yours, and I'll take it a step further. I can imagine seeing myself playing this for hours on end with the sound and TV off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, you have to you have to keep track of it pretty well. The controls are probably the 
um, oddest thing about it. You know, looking at this one room he's in right now, it, there's something very, like, marathon about this room. Like, somebody at Bungie is yelling at Capcom because it's, it's like they've stolen their graphics. Yeah, but th this was before um, Bungie existed, wasn't it? No, 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 no. Bungie was around, Marathon was around a long time ago. Oh, wait, this... Mar Marathon. Whoa, whoa. Remind me, what is that game? That sounds like one I've played. Mm -hmm. Marathon, in the grand scheme, is really, I think it's... I think it's a sequel to the entire Halo series. Um, but it was the first major game that Bungie developed years ago. Mm, yeah, that's not And it game. was anyway. it was made originally for the Mac because amazingly enough you could make games for the Mac. It was crazy. But it was released in 1994. Mm. And this was released in 1997, I believe. Yes. 9798. Yeah, it was, it was released as Mega Man Legends. Yeah, for the PS1 and then they later re-released it as Mega Man 64 on the Nintendo 64. Yeah. What is it, Mega Man? They even re ended up releasing it on PC as well, but nobody remembers that. I actually remember seeing it on the shelf, which is pretty sad for me. Yeah, I totally have the f same feeling for this as the uh, Toe Jam and Earl 3. Yeah, yeah. However, though, I have to say, I am very happy that Capcom came around last year and they redeemed themselves because as horrific as this game was and all of the, the Mega Man network and all of that. Oh, huh. yeah, the card oh, battle. Oh, God. Yeah, as, as horrible as all of those were, I gotta say, I am proud of what they did last year. Well, you you won't, you won't have to um suffer this game today because it's actually not available. They they were rumored to be releasing a version of it for the PSP, but otherwise, you cannot buy it today unless you get it at a pawn shop or something. Though they are rumored to be making the third one, so I'm sure there's millions of kids crying out because of that. <laughs> well, you know, apparently the PSP is the home of all horrible Mega Man games. Yeah, yes. Now that you mention that, that is uh, very true. Uh, oddly enough. Okay, well, the last Mega Man game we have on here is actually a very good one. One of my absolute personal favorites. So I seriously think Capcom is running out of names for the bosses. So they have like Sheep Man and well, you have Commando Man. There was something else. You know, when I first heard about this game, I heard that Capcom was releasing a new Mega Man series. It was going to be, it was going to be a throwback to the original, the original well, that, game. That was Mega Man Nine, wasn't it? What's that? that that's Mega Man Nine, because this is Mega Man Ten. This is Ten. Yeah, I mean, first they released Nine, which is the first one in their retro throwback series. Right, but I heard about this one because oh. Nine. I saw nine. I didn't play a whole lot of it, but I wasn't very thrilled with it. Um, but then they were talking about releasing ten, and they said, you know, it's going to be completely true to the original few games. Um, and immediately, I got very skeptical because I saw nine. I wasn't impressed. You know, I've seen things like the B Battle Network series, the Zero series. It wasn't fantastic. But the minute this game dropped on arcade, I went and I grabbed the demo and I, I bought it within the hour. This game is one, by far my favorite Mega Man game. And I was a big fan of the X series. Um, X and X2 were both you know favorite games of mine. Um, I owned the original Mega Man for the Game Boy. 
Uh, but this is just a beautiful, well done game. You know, it's. Well, yeah, I think they um, they definitely upped the level design. The level design seemed much more creative and interesting. They sort of innovating in that front since they, you know, obviously the graphics are 8 bit, so you can't really do much there. So they instead had to innovate on the gameplay and level design. Though he still doesn't have a wall kick. They did. They didn't do that. No, they didn't. But you know, I honestly, I, with with the the graphics the way they are, I, I honestly think that's a good thing. I think that would have just. I think that would have taken away from the classic experience. Yeah, the, but I think you're the the other Mega Man classic. I think you might be thinking of Mega Man Eight on the PlayStation. Eight was eight actually wasn't too bad. Okay, yeah. Um, and I had played it on the Saturn. Actually, they had it for the Sega Saturn as well. Oh, did they? Um, yeah, it was one of the few games that actually survived. But yeah, because that, that was another was, one of those retro throwbacks. Except they kept it in the updated graphics. Right. And you know, honestly, I. I had some mixed feelings about it at first because I wasn't sure about them going back to the bit graphics for 10, but I was. Yeah. It was so amazing to, to play an 8 bit game on a modern. It's built for a modern console. Yeah, well, I'm curious to see how long they're going to keep this up. Because they can only use so many nouns for the names of their bosses. Well, not only that, they're running out of numbers, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Gonna be sitting around me playing Mega Man 27 before you know it. Yeah, and you'll be fighting, um... Faucet Man... Um... Foot Man... Grass Man, or I don't know, what else? Cheese Man. Oh, they may have already done Cheese Man. <laughs> they have Shoe Well, man, most, pump most man. of them are pretty bad. Solar well, there's got to be at least that many uh, Mario games, right? Yeah, uh, but yeah. the but... thing about Mario games is, while they've all been updated with slightly different storylines along the years, it's always been the same basic premise with the same cast of characters and a couple of extra throw-ins here and there. You know, like when they introduced Yoshi, um, that was a big deal, and Yoshi stuck around, and then you started, you had the opportunity to play as the Toads later in, in, uh, in different games. I mean, even as early as Super Mario Bros. 2, even yeah. though that wasn't a real Mario game, but that's neither here nor there. But Mario has always been one of those series that's, that's remained true over the years. They basically just keep making the same game, just updating it with different styles and whatnot. They do, and you know, another one that's it's not as popular, but still a fantastic series. And actually, aside from the Zelda series, one of my favorite series to this day um, is the Metroid series. I mm. absolutely love Metroid. The entire premise, the storyline, the, the fact that there's you know a female hero. That actually, I dig that. But you just, you know, it's it's good to see that there are still a few throwback games being made that mm -hmm. are true to their roots. Yeah, I, I wish they would make more of these kind of games. Like, especially Sonic. That I wish they would seriously do something with Sonic. Yeah, and you know, I, even Sonic I know that's, the Hedgehog that's, Four. That's, that was. That's. Uh, I don't. I don't, and don't get me started. I know there's going to be a whole episode on that later, but yeah, you know, Sonic Four. I was, I like it, but I wasn't thrilled about it. Yeah, I was. I was going to buy it like on the spot, and then I started playing the demo, and I'm like, this looks like Sonic. It the physics, plays the physics like is Sonic, what really throws it, it off. Feel like Sonic. It, the physics are completely off. Yeah, they, they were weird. 
All right, so on to our last game, which is part of none of the series that we've been talking about. And now for something completely different. But this is kind of in the vein of Toe Jam and Earl. No. It's not a man with a radio up his nose by any chance, is it? <laughs> no, it's a man with a radio up his brother's nose. <laughs> no, th th this would be a game with, that, with a bear with a bird in his backpack. Banjo Kazooie. Another one of those games that is completely bizarre and you have no idea what the game developers were thinking when they made it. Someone, someone was high as hell when they made this game. Well, it was prob probably when Super Mario 64 came out, the, the guy that Rare said decided they had to do something. And I don't, they hadn't done Donkey Kong 64 yet. No, and I think what happened was they didn't know what to do with Donkey Kong 64 because no one remembers it. No one ever played it. No one, everyone hated Donkey Kong 64. I hated it. I know that much because all the good Donkey Kong stuff they already did in Donkey Kong Country. Mm -hmm. And you know, you look at this game. You look at you see what they did with the the Super Nintendo, and then you come to Banjo Kazooie for the Nintendo 64, and it's like. Come on, really, guys? Is this 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 is it? Well, it's basically a Super Mario 64 clone with a whole heap of items thrown in because in a rare game, there has to be a mega super collectathon with like a million different items to collect so you can get your little reward or whatever. Oh yeah, well, it's like Goldeneye. There were like a there were like three billion guns in Goldeneye, I think. Yeah, and instead of they had the um, kind of same bizarre wacko sense of humor that was in um, Toe Jam Earl, where you have just bizarre creatures, bizarre enemies. So I don't know if it was done quite as to a good effect on this. Yeah, see, I just... I, I liked it because of the 3D platformers. I'm kind of partial to those if they're done right. So there's like kind of like this game. But the collectathon gets old after you've collected your 330th music note. And well, you know, and honestly, the... Uh, um, Super Mario 64 was... I, I don't know, it's still to this day one of the, the best Mario games ever created. Um, it was it was different. It added a lot. It added a completely new dynamic. And this just Banjo and Kazoo, Banjo Kazooie didn't add anything to it. It other than it, items to collect. Right. It it took that same formula and just tried to multiply it and it didn't work very well, I don't think. Oh well, yeah, that, that was basically kind of the whole story of the Nintendo 64. As soon as Mario 64 came out, it was a huge success, then almost every game after that was a copy. Right, yeah. There was, that was, it was like that for two or three years even. And either it was a copy of Super Mario 64, or they tried to do the same thing that they did with the previous game in whatever series it was and just update the graphics. And, and of course, being a rare title, it also has to have a completely bizarre storyline, too.
Well, Peter, oh look, it's look, it's the lake from uh, Ocarina of Time. It's the water oh, yeah. temple. <laughs> Well, P Peter says he misses this game a lot, but if you, know, you miss this game a lot, you, you can go on the Xbox 360 and get it for $15, if you are so inclined. Which, I, I have to admit, I actually have this. I, I was tempted to buy the second one, but after playing through most of this one, I got kind of tired. So are we done watching this one? Yeah, I think we're done with Banjo Kazooie. Alright, well I think that then wraps up this episode. And before before I forget, I forgot to mention Mega Man 10 is available on the Xbox Arcade for $10, as well as the PlayStation Network for $10. So, if you want to pick that up and get some modern retro gaming. I'll run out and buy it now. <laughs> Hold on, let me open my brow. Wait, I already bought Mega Man 10. <laughs> it, but I will say this, for the 800 points that it costs, it is worth every single one of them. Yeah, I, I was tempted. I was tempted with nine, but I played. But that one was kind of was like really hard, like the originals. Ten, not so much. It seemed well, it didn't have the in absolute insane difficulty. So I definitely think ten was better than nine. And I think you can play as Proto Man and possibly even base. Wait, you can play as Proto Man in in nine? No, ten. Oh yeah, in ten, 10 you can play by default as Mega Man or Proto Man, but you have to buy the base um, mode. a DLC pack for base. Yeah, I, I kind of liked base, like I kind of like Zero. They seem sort of modeled after each each other. Zero was cool. I did like Zero a lot. Um, he had a, he had a it, lightsaber. I, I know. <laughs> What's not to like? All right, so before we wrap this up, do either of you want to tell any of our, what do we have, two viewers, where they can find you guys online? Well, let's see. Um, you can find me on Twitter. I am Z underscore Williamson for the one person that doesn't know that. <laughs> and Joel? I am Hobbit from PA on the Twitter and pretty much everywhere else. And you can find me on Twitter at Joshua Caleb75 and just about anywhere else as either Joshua Caleb or Joshua Caleb75. There's apparently a Joshua Caleb running around there that keeps taking the username. So I have to tack on numbers. We know people. I'm sure we can take care of that for you. That'd be nice, especially the guy on Twitter. I, I swear he hasn't tweeted probably for like months or a year. I don't, I don't know what he's doing with it. I know a guy. <laughs> Does he have anything to do with um, Anonymous? Um, okay. no. Not that we're going to say. Yeah, I mean, then it wouldn't be I mean, we're not really. Yeah, we're not at liberty to talk about these sort of things. Yeah, we don't want to get our the podcast shut down before we even get three episodes out. Well, that's true. Yeah, I like my Twitter account as well. Yeah. Yeah, mine's mine's pretty nifty. <laughs> All right. Well, you can if you want to make comments or watch this again or even just read. I do various posts about retro news and gaming on my blog retrogamesforever.com and I am still working on getting this put into a podcast feed for iTunes and such 
and Zoom and Zoom and for for me. Ho- hopefully, I can get it into Zoom, but Microsoft is a little stingy about that stuff. Uh, I, I now I do know some people over there I could actually talk to. Okay, yeah, you, you do that. All right. <laughs> 